Hey everyone, it's Miss Davis. All right, let's see if we can get our chapter 7.1 and 7.2 notes done over ratios and proportions and ratios to and similar figures. All right, well the first thing you need to do is make sure that you've got your comp book there in front of you and that you have that small sheet of paper that you received in class, okay? All right, today what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and give you a bunch of the notes at one time. I want you to go ahead and write everything down, so you'll need to pause me while you get everything written down, and then we'll talk about it, okay? That way you're not trying to write while I'm talking and, and all that good stuff. So let's try it this way. The first thing we always do in class is we need to write our I will statement, so this will save you some time when you get here. This one for chapter 7, 1, and 2 says, I will set up proportions and ratios to solve for variables and analyze similar polygons. Okay, so you can go ahead and pause and get that written down and then join me again in a second. All right, so at this point we need to go over some of our vocabulary. All right, here is the vocabulary you're going to need. So I'd like you to go ahead and write this down. So pause me. Write it down. You can do it in colors or you don't have to, whatever works for you. And then come back to me and we'll talk about them. All right, so you should have all of your vocabulary and your I will written by now. All right, the first vocabulary word that we're talking about is, is the comparison. Uh, it's called ratios, pardon me, the ratio. It's the comparison using fractions. Okay, so you've seen it many times. You've used ratios. Uh, one that we use a lot in math is the slope. It's the ratio of the rise over run in your graph or on your graph. The next vocabulary word that we're talking about is proportions. It's an equation stating that two ratios are equal. For instance, 4 sixths is equal to 2 thirds. Okay, so those are proportional. If I were to cut a pizza into six slices and take four of them, it wouldn't look the same as if I had a pizza, cut it into three slices, and took two. You know, you have four little ones or two big ones. But if you look at your pizza, you have the same amount left. That's proportions, okay? The last one that you need to make sure you are aware of is cross products. This is where you have proportions equal to each other, but you may be missing a piece, where you're solving for a variable. Cross products is what you've known as cross multiply. As you can see right here, okay, where I cross multiplied these two. Now, the thing also that I'm going to add here is this part right here that you may or may not have seen before. If you notice, this is a ratio setting A to B, okay? Same way of writing it right here. The number on the top goes on the left. The number on the bottom goes on the right. Same thing on this side, C to D. Now, when you write them in this way right here, the letters or numbers that are in the middle are your means, and the letters or numbers on the outside are your extremes, okay? All right, at this point, we're going to go ahead and start some examples. So I'd like you to get this written down, including the work. So write it all down and then come back to me, okay? All right, now at this point you should have the example one, the questions written down, and all the work. If you didn't do that already, make sure you pause me and go ahead and do that so that you can pay attention while we're talking about it. All right, this says a ratio of angle measures in a triangle is 2 to 3 to 4. Okay? All right, it says what is the measure of the smallest angle? Okay, well, if you remember when we talked about aspect ratios, we did it the same way. Okay, we added an X to each of the numbers, and then we equaled it at that time to the length of the diagonal because we were using Pythagorean theorem and stuff like that. Well, here they've given us something else we know. We know that the angle measures in a triangle are supposed to equal 100, 180 degrees. So that's why we have added 2X plus 3X plus 4X equals 180 degrees. We have 9x equals 180, and then we just solved for x, which was 20. But why do I have this written over here? Okay, well, because x, just solving for x, doesn't answer the question. x isn't the smallest angle. The 2 times x is the smallest angle. Okay, 3 being the middle and 4 being the largest. Well, they wanted the smallest angle, so we did 2 times x, which was 20, and got 40 degrees for our smallest angle. Okay? All right, let's do one more example. This one is solving for y. So at this point, please pause me and write down this question and the work, and then we'll talk about it. 
All right, glad you're back. This example says solve for y. They gave us this part right here that is 5y over 16 equals 125 over y. This is where we're going to use our cross products, which cross multiply. You've done this several times. 5y times y is equal to 5y squared. 16 times 125 is equal to 2,000. We divide both sides by 5. We get y squared equals 400. Take the square root of y squared and 400, and we get y equals 20. That is what they've looked for. They asked us for y, not to plug it in any, in anything. So y equals 20 is our answer. Okay, that finishes up our 7.1 notes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move to the left side of my comp book. Okay. And I'm going to make this my similar figures, the ratios and similar figures. So at this point, what I'd like you to do is, once again, first of all, title your page, 7.2, okay? And then this little flat book comes from the half sheet of paper that you received in class today, okay? So all you're going to do is you're going to fold this sheet in half just like this. Okay? You actually won't need any staples in yours. All you need to do is tape it down just like this across the top. Okay? Once you've done that, then you can copy all of this down. So once again, I'd like you to pause me and then write everything down and then come back to me. Okay? All right, so let's talk about this. It says two polygons are similar polygons if and only if. A, AKA this arrow. Okay, that's what that means, if and only if. If and only if their corresponding angles are congruent and their corresponding sides are proportional. Okay, so at this point, you're going to make it, it's the same thing as our congruent triangles, except there the angles and the sides had to be congruent. In similar polygons, your angles are congruent and your sides are proportional. Okay? All right. So, but the one thing you have to make sure of is that you are comparing the same shape. You can't have a triangle and a square that are similar figures. They have to be the same shape. All right. So, let's turn our page. Now, what I'd like you to do is, once again, I'm going to show you this, and I'm going to leave it here, and I want you to go ahead and pause me again, write this all down, and then I want you to come back to me and let's talk about it. Okay? All right, welcome back. Here we go. We've got two triangles. We've got a similarity statement, and then we've got a definition and some work. Well, remember our congruency statement, okay? Oh, and by the way, notice the squiggle. That's what I call him, is a squiggle. He is missing something from the congruency statement. See, he's right here too, but it's gotten rid of the equals, okay? The triangles are no longer equal. They are just similar, all right? So it says corresponding angles are congruent, hence the same um, arc marks as you look through your similarity statement. A is congruent to D and B to E and C to F, but AB should be proportional to DE and so on. Well, in order to, put, to prove uh, triangles <coughs> excuse me, or any figure proportional, we have to prove all of the sides are proportional. That's why we wrote it like this. If you'll notice, it corresponds to your similar statement, similarity statement. A, B to D, E. I just wrote in their sides, 6 to 3, just like this. And I reduce it. They go to 2. Then I did B, C to E, F. I wrote in their corresponding sides, 9 over 4.5. And that reduces to 2. And then we did first and last letters. A, C to D, F right there, okay? AC is 10, DF is 5, and they reduce to 2 as well. Okay? All right, here we go for this next example. I see you'll be happy in class tomorrow because you'll have less to write down. <laughs> All right. So this is one more example. I'm going to set it up here for you. I'd like you once again to put me on pause, copy this down, and then we will talk about it. All right, here we go. We've got two quadrilaterals, all right? Notice that there aren't any parallel signs or anything like that, so we don't have trapezoids necessarily. We just have quadrilaterals. So we have four different sides that we need to compare. Well, notice that I left out the letters. All I did was put 
the ratio of the sides that they should be. Well, let's see where I started. AB, it should be AB to EF. AB is 6, EF is 12. All right, that looks good. Then we have BC to FG. Well, BC is 5.4 and FG is 10.8. Okay, CD to GH. Well, CD is 4, GH is 8. And then the first and last letters, don't, know, don't forget those, AD was 5, and let's see, EH is 10. Okay, <coughs> excuse me again. You need to reduce each of your fractions, okay? So we've got to make sure that they all reduce the same, and in this case, they do. They all reduce to 1 half. This is your similarity ratio. It is how they are related to each other. Okay, It's what they all um, come down to or simplify down to. Similarity ratio is one half. The scale factor, of which we will work much more with as we go along, but the scale factor is talking about how do I get from the first figure to the second figure. Okay, I have to multiply everything in this first figure by 2 to get to the second figure. So in other words, 2 of these is similar to 1 of these. Okay, So 2 of these to 1 of these. Or you can write it in a fraction just like this. Notice that these are opposite, opposite of each other or reciprocals. Okay, They don't have different signs. They're just flipped over. Okay, Most of the time this will be the case. But not always. Sometimes they're the same. All right. If you have questions on these, be writing them down so that we can go over them tomorrow in class. All right. One more, and then you're all done with these notes. Okay? Here it is. You can write it up here underneath your flat book, or you can write it here wherever you want to. Make sure you leave yourself some room somewhere to write some questions, though. Okay? All right, here we go. This is the last problem. Please pause me, write it down, and come back to me, and we'll go over it quickly together. All right, you ready to finish this up? It says rectangle DEFG is similar to rectangle HJKL. So it's what is the length of HJKL? Okay, well, they're looking at width being across here and length being this way. Okay, so let's see. They gave us two things over here, so 27 and 40. Well, if I just start and write a proportion of 27 to 40, what is that? Length to width, right? Okay. Um, in this one, at least. Now, if we do that over here, it's going to turn it around. So let's just look at this. I did DG 27. Well, DG here is the first and last letter. Well, here, HL is the first and last letter. Well, that's up here. See, don't ever go by what it looks like. Go by the similarity statement because that's telling me that 27, if it's on top here, 18 has to be on top here so that I'm doing first and last letter here and first and last letter there. Then the 40 goes on the bottom, DE. That's the first and second letter of this one. So I have to do first and second letter here, HJ. That is this side. So basically, they twisted it and turned it up like this. Okay, so if you were to look at them, you might say this is the width and length, okay, which would make this width and length. All right, so now we've got 27 over 40 equals 18 over J. I use J. You can use X if you want to. But make sure that you realize I wrote this according to the similarity statement. Now I'm going to use my cross products. I'm going to cross multiply 40 times 18 equals 27J in my case. Well, 40 times 18 is 720, right? And then I still have 27J. Well, I've got to divide both sides by 27 in order to get J by itself. So 720 divided by 27 is 26 and two-thirds inches. I think that comes out to something like 26.667 or something. But normally, <coughs> excuse me, normally your inches are written in fractions like that. So 26 two-thirds inches. <coughs> excuse me, is equal to J, or in this case, which it represents JH or HJ. Okay? All right, that sums up our notes for Chapter 7.1 and 7.2.